Hey everybody, welcome back to Sam Can Do. I'm a mom, a maker, I'm a Glowforge enthusiast, and I'm coming back with a series, how to turn your Glowforge into cash. Now, I look very different because it's been a long time since I recorded that pre-recorded video, um, but we're gonna jump right into it. How do you price your items? I'm not gonna make you wait for my number one tip. How you price your items is 100% your choice. You can price your items no whatever you want. There is no rule that says that you can't have something be stupid expensive or stupid cheap. You can lose money, you can have huge profits. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to give you some tips on how to think through that process for you um, and also how to calculate the things that people don't think about when you're thinking of cost. When I talk to artists all the time, I get so frustrated because they say, well, the materials cost me X and I'm making this, but how much time did you spend on it? How much investment did you put in it? Because we want to always build for what? Growth. And the AC just turned on. One second. Gosh darn it. I am so professional that my table is dirty. Okay, we're gonna keep going. The AC's not off yet, but we're just gonna keep going. Okay. The first thing you want to track is what you've already probably been aware of is your cost, the cost of your items. Make sure that you put it in a nice little spreadsheet, like on Google Docs, you can get free spreadsheets there. And don't forget to add the tax, the shipping, and the way that you would divide that up by product is let's say you use a, um, like let's say you have a sheet of wood this big and you only use a quarter of it, then you take the cost plus the shipping plus the whatever. And if you have multiple items in the cart, you divide the shipping between each item, whatever, and then you divide it by how much of it you're using. Then you'll keep the cost for that one product. You also wanna make sure you track the cost of your, what, what's the most important thing? Your time. Your time you can never get back. Track your time. Think about how much money you need to make to survive and charge yourself that much time per hour that it takes you to make whatever it is you're making. Now, you might wanna do a different time for your Glowforge engraving time. If your Glowforge is spending an hour engraving one product, I want you to think about a dollar a minute because that's what people charge to rent out a laser, uh, one to $2 a minute. Um, I've seen different prices, so forgive me if I'm wrong, but charge a dollar a minute to yourself for the time that you spend engraving that one product. If it takes 10 minutes, it's add $10. Now, you're not only always gonna be able to sell something at the price point that you need it to, so you just need to decide, is this product viable for the market that I have access to? Um, and don't sell yourself short because sometimes we think about our friends and family. You want to think about your actual market, the people around you. Now, if you watch the last video, you saw things like how to sell your stuff, where to sell your stuff. When you go to those farmers markets, you're going to see sometimes things that are similar to you. When you go online, when you go on Etsy, wherever you're selling, look at what competitors are doing and keep in mind that that might be a good litmus for what people are willing to pay. Now, willing to pay and what you price are it's just a whole long different decision because you can have a similar product that is priced more if you change different aspects of your marketing, your branding, so on and so forth. If you hear snoring, it's my dog, Molly. She's, I'll insert a video. Now, once you make your cost sheet, so let's say you make a cutting board and you realize that each cutting board costs you $5 in time, engraving, materials, and everything. Maybe it's $20. What I like to do, and this is not like a rule out there, this is just what I've done in the past, is make my MSRP or my suggested retail price, um, make that cost 30%. So give yourself a 70% profit margin. Why I do this is it gives me room for error. It gives me room for, um, you know, the times I don't sell. It gives me room for sales that I might want to have. It gives me room to do wholesale because if I sell it to a wholesale person, if I have a, let's say it's a $30 cost cutting board that the retail price is a hundred because working in hundreds is easy. So if I have a $30 cutting board, I sell it for a hundred. If I do with wholesale, if I sell it to a wholesaler, sell it for $50, they sell it for a hundred dollars. And then we still have room to make a profit because mind you, yeah, if you sell directly to a person, you're going to make 20, you're going to make $70 versus 20. But if you do that a hundred times over, then you have volume and volume helps every way. And then you say, well, I don't have the ability to make that volume. Then you look at outsourcing to other people, bigger lasers, other things. We're looking into product development, manufacturing. There's all kinds of options. Don't sell yourself short. Now, if you are shipping your product, consider making a higher price for free shipping because I find, 
that a lot of people are so addicted to free shipping that they will pay for a more expensive product if they know they don't have to worry about the shipping. You also, when you're pricing your object, want, or your object, your product, you wanna think about what realm is it in? Is this a luxury product? Is this a every, every man, every Joe product? Is this a super sale product that the whole value is that you can do it for so affordable? Is it a sustainable product? Is it like, what is your edge? And then what you do with the marketing and the presentation of that product should match the price value. If you're selling a highly like um, price value, like this is so, so, so affordable, then you can do it in simple packaging that still looks nice, but it's very affordable, you know, nothing, no bells and whistles, just as is. But if you have a luxury, like let's say you're selling that same cutting board for $200, think about the way that you present that. Maybe it should be tightly wrapped in a beautiful branded piece of tissue paper, then placed in a burlap sack with your logo imprinted on it. Make sure that that experience matches the price point. And when you get into that luxury world, you want to give little things extra away. You wanna put maybe a card with a, with a message in it or photos of you in your workshop, photos of you and your family saying, thank you so much for supporting local, or there's all different types of ways. If you get on Pinterest and you search packaging, there's so many different ideas. Hardy, what now? all my dogs are, are just making lots of noise. The point is you do not want to spend time, 40 hours, 50 hours on a product and then realize you're not making any money. If this is just a thing for you to have fun, then price it whatever you want, lose money. It doesn't matter because art is art. And sometimes when you get into, you know, making a living out of your art, it can steal some of the fun. But at the same time, the freedom and, and the opportunity that you have is is worth it. So make sure that you're not wasting your time and make sure that if you're making money or losing money, you at least know what's going on. Track your hours. Your time is the most valuable thing that you have. Even if it's like you're doing something in front of the TV and sitting there designing, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, if you ever grow, you want to make sure that if you need to hire someone that you can afford to pay them for the time that they spend doing that product for you. It's not only about you. It's about, again, scaling and preparing for growth. Most people don't move in their small businesses, I think, because they only envision it in the smallest capacity that it is right now because they don't want to, you know, get too ambitious. But the thing is you can get ambitious. Don't get delusional. Don't make dreams with no action or don't make dreams that you have no access to the information to learn about them. Say, I want to do a business and I want to be able to move this many products. Okay. Well then you create lead measures. You say, okay, if I want to move a hundred cutting boards. And by average, when I do one market, I sell five cutting boards and I need to make sure that I book out at least 20 markets. And then how can I increase transactions? Maybe I have an additional product that I add on top of that. If you buy a cutting board, you can buy this cutting board oil. And then all of a sudden those two purchases become four items, which or, you know, however many, whatever, those small amounts of purchases now have multiple items, those add-ons, there's different things. Make sure that you just think about how I want to grow and make steps to do it. Every dream is just one to-do list away. I personally believe. I hope this was helpful. When you're pricing your items, don't sell yourself short because at the end of the day, there's people who love what you do. It's just, you have to find them and it takes a lot of hard work, but don't be overwhelmed by the hard work. Be overwhelmed by delusion and not trying and not going because the information is out there. Feel free to comment down below if you have any questions. I'm going to try my best to get to my comments and we have one more video coming on how to turn your Glowforge into cash. Thank you so much and of course if you want to buy glowforge you can save um five hundred dollars on a pro or 250 on a plus or a hundred something on a basic with the code sam can do or you go to glowforge.com slash sam can do thank you so much for being here on my channel it means the world to me and i hope that you'll have an excellent day okay goodbye